Installing new GFCI outlet is a fairly common to-do item. However, it's also one that's fairly confusing. So I figure what better way to demonstrate the proper way to install GFCI than to build this wall. But first we need to cover the most common point of confusion, which is what's the difference between the line terminals and the load terminals on GFCI. All right, so you can see here, I've got a typical GFCI receptacle. And on the back, we've got our line terminals at the top and our load terminals at the bottom. Now this actually can vary depending on the manufacturer. So you wanna be sure to check this before you install this. But the line terminals are basically what you're gonna use when the power comes into this outlet. So this is the power that's coming from the breaker box essentially. And it has to go to this line terminal in order to provide protection for not only this receptacle, but other receptacles if you have it wired up that way. Now the load terminal, as you can probably imagine, is what you would use to wire up your additional receptacles on that circuit. And the load terminal is what protects everything else. Something else that can be confusing is the line and load wires actually swap positions depending on where you are in the circuit. Now, let me explain what I mean by that. So I've marked up these wires to help us track where the power is coming and going. So this is the wire that's attached to the panel. It's coming to the inside of this wall and coming up to this first electrical box. This is the line wire because it's coming into this receptacle. Once I connect a receptacle, this next wire is going to be the load receptacle because this is where the power is going out or flowing out of this receptacle. Now, a funny thing happens with the load wire is it's considered the load wire at this point, but as soon as you get to the next receptacle, it's considered the line wire. And the reason for that is because the power is flowing into this receptacle. The same thing happens again. There's another wire on here. This is going to be the load because the power is flowing out of this receptacle. But once we get to the next receptacle in line, then this is considered the line wire because again, it's power coming into the receptacle. One easy way to remember the difference is the word line has the two letters I-N in it. And also load has the letter O in it. So O can stand for out. So line, in, load, out. And GFCI receptacles aren't the only place you'll see line versus load either. You can also find these on other receptacle types like AFCIs and surge protected outlets. So having a clear grasp of what line and load is can go a long way for your DIY projects. In this first scenario, we're just gonna wire up a standard GFCI. Since we only have one set of wires coming into the GFCI, we need to make sure that those wires are hooked up to the line terminals. And also with GFCIs, they generally have an option to back wire these, which just simply means you can insert the wire into the back and then tighten the terminal screw down in order to make your connection. This is really awesome because it can make the job a lot faster. The alternative to back wiring would be to take this wire and then make a J hook in order to wrap it around the terminal screw and tighten it down. But that's a couple extra steps that we don't have to go through for this. The black wire is the hot wire and the white wire is the neutral wire. The hot wire should also correspond to brass terminals and then the neutral wire should be silver terminals as well. And that's another way to help you keep track of this. Tighten this up here. And then for the ground connection, we could wire it directly to this green screw. However, I'd like to use a pigtail connection for all of my grounds. A pigtail is basically a spare piece of wire that's attached to the receptacle and then connected to the wiring that's in the wall, either with a regular wire nut or you can use a Wago lever nut, which is a lot faster. And that's what I'm gonna do for all these demonstrations. Just gonna tighten that down. Then we're gonna take the Wago connector and add both of these wires in here and then our connection is done. So if this is your scenario, you just have one single GFCI that's not in the middle of a run, it's at the end of a run, you just have one set of wires coming into it, this is what that looks like. Now let's look at a more common scenario where you have not only line wires coming in, but you also have load wires coming out. Now if you're not sure how to identify which is the line wire and which is the load wire, I've created a completely different video that you can go check out whenever you're done with this one that will explain that process. All right, so now we're going to hook these wires up to the load terminals, same process as before. The hot wire goes to the brass terminal and the neutral wire goes to the silver terminal. So in our case, we've already attached the ground pigtail. So we just need to make sure this final ground for the load wire is attached in this way go as well. And then that is how you wire a GFCI. It's also always a good idea to test your GFCIs after you install them to make sure they're functioning properly.
If you have a GFCI protecting a standard receptacle, this is basically what it's going to look like. You'll have the wire connected to the load terminals on the GFCI, and then once it comes over to the standard receptacle, it basically becomes the line wire because the power is going into the receptacle. And in this scenario, we just have a single receptacle here because this is the last one on the run. However, if you have additional receptacles that are on this run, then obviously you'd have another set of wires coming off of this receptacle and going on to the next. Here's something else to keep in mind. Once you transition over to a standard receptacle, the line and load terminals don't really matter anymore. It's just basically the terminals that you're hooking the wires up to. It only matters with the GFCI because of the circuitry that's built into the GFCIs in order to protect against a ground fault. Now, just a reminder, if you confuse the line and the load on the GFCI, it can cause some unexpected behavior. And again, I'm going to demonstrate what that looks like here in a second. So now to show you how the power is flowing, I'm going to use this non-contact voltage tester. So you can see here as I get close to the wires, it's going to light up and make a noise to show you that there's power flowing through this. And as we go over here to this receptacle, you can see there's power coming over to this one as well. Now, if we trip this, there shouldn't be any more power flowing to this receptacle. All right, so we should still have power coming into this receptacle. And we do, but this one should not have any power anymore because it's been tripped. All right, so now I'm going to reset this, and then we're going to trip it at the standard receptacle. So again, this is what you would expect. There's no more power coming to the standard receptacle because the GFCI breaker that this is attached to tripped. And we'll reset it again, and you'll see the tester light back up. Another common point of confusion is whether or not you can have multiple GFCIs protecting a single circuit, whether that's multiple GFCI receptacles or having something like a GFCI breaker and a GFCI receptacle on it. In general, you can have multiple GFCIs on a single circuit. However, there are some things you need to be aware of. So two GFCIs hooked to each other in parallel. You've got this GFCI basically protecting this one. So if we test this GFCI, then it's going to kill the power to this other GFCI receptacle. And you can see there's no power flowing to this anymore. We'll go ahead and reset this. And then we'll try tripping this GFCI. And you can see there's no more power coming to this one, but there's still power over here. Now, this doesn't always happen. In fact, different GFCI manufacturers can have different levels of sensitivity. And if I reverse these two, you're going to see a totally different behavior. I've gone ahead and swapped these GFCI receptacles. And just to be clear, these receptacles are manufactured by two different companies. So the first scenario, whatever receptacle this GFCI tester was plugged into, that was the one that tripped. But as you can see here in this scenario, as I plug this in, this is receiving power. If I try and trip this, this is the one that trips. The reason is, is because this manufacturer is a little bit more sensitive than this one. And to make matters even more confusing, it doesn't always trip this way. I've had this one trip sometimes directly instead of this one, so it just kind of depends. Let's just say troubleshooting daisy chain GFCI receptacles can be a real pain. Now, what if you have a GFCI receptacle, but you don't want it to protect anything else on the circuit? Well, you can wire it up with a pigtail. Now we already have a pigtail connection with our ground wire. The only thing we're gonna do differently now is create a pigtail connection for our hot wires and for our neutral wires. This is gonna let the electricity flow through the wires directly to the next receptacle without having to go through this receptacle first. And to make this simple again, I'm just using some Wago lever connectors. Now the next thing we need to do is take a spare piece of wire to make our pigtail connections. I just have about four inches of spare wire here that we're gonna use. So what we'll do is we'll remove the inner wire from the sheath and we're gonna take our neutral and hot wires and we're gonna remove the insulation from the ends so we can make the connections. If you're ever in doubt about how much wire you need to remove, there's a strip guide on the side of the Wago connectors as well as on the back of the GFCI receptacles. All right, so now we're gonna insert this third wire into our connector. And then we're going to wire this up to the neutral side of our GFCI. And do the same thing for the hot wire. Even though we've connected this receptacle with pigtails, the same rules still apply. You need to make sure these pigtail connections are coming into the line terminals on the back of the GFCI. All right, and here's what this looks like from the back. You can see we're only using one set of terminal screws here. The line terminals and the load terminals are unused. Now that all of these are wired up with pigtail connections, let's make sure power is going to each of them. And since all of these receptacles are isolated from protection, the only things that should trip are these specific GFCIs themselves whenever I test them. We put our GFCI tester in this first GFCI receptacle and we trip it. 
and we test to see if there's power coming to this next GFCI. You can see that there is. And then for this final receptacle on the run, you can see that there's power there as well. Now, if we leave this tripped and we go to the next GFCI, we'll trip this one. And then we can see the last receptacle still has power. Now let's go ahead and reset these two GFCIs. And we'll come over here to our receptacle that's at the end of the run. And we'll try and trip the GFCI protection. And you can see it does nothing. Another common question I hear is whether or not it really matters if the line and the load terminals are connected up in the right way or if the GFCI provides protection in either case. So let's take a look at this. So I've got power coming into the load terminals instead of the line terminals. And as you can see here, this is powered up. But when I hit the test button, nothing happens. The other interesting thing is, is if we test this and trip it, you can see there's no power coming into this here, but we also cannot reset it anymore. So then what happens if a downstream receptacle is connected to the line terminals of this one? So again, it's wired reverse. If we test this, that actually trips, but we can't reset it. Now, what if you got the line and the load terminals correct? However, you accidentally reversed the hot and the neutral wires. Will this still provide protection? The first thing you'll notice is this tester shows that the hot and neutral wires are reversed. And if we try to test this, again, nothing happens. If we trip this manually to test it and we try to reset it, we can. However, it's still not working properly. Bottom line, if you're experiencing some odd behavior from your GFCI protection, it's a good idea to double check all of your electrical connections to make sure those are the way they're supposed to be. And if they are, it's also possible that you have a bad GFCI receptacle and it simply needs to be replaced. If you found this video helpful, I appreciate you hitting the like button. And also be sure to check out this other video next. I'm sure you'll like it too. All right, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.